Welcome to Tracing Your Family Roots. My name is Arlene Sachs and this is Sally Ann Sack. And today we're going to talk about a brand new organization that's just gotten off the ground, I guess this year officially. January. Just in January of this year uh, officially. And it's the International Institute of for, Jew for Jewish Genealogy. And it's an idea you've tossed around for a long many, many years, yeah. Sally Ann. I, I know, I remember you talking about it about eight years ago, or exactly. So, uh, so it's it's been around a while. What is this? And, and you're you're one I, of the. I'm the chair of the founders committee, which translates into chief fundraiser. <laughs> I didn't have that in mind when I started. I must tell you, it's um, the the rest of that long cumbersome title is and Paul Jacoby Center, affiliated with the Jewish National and University Library in Jerusalem. The National Library in Jerusalem is both a national library like our Library of Congress, and also the Library of the Hebrew University. But they're going to split up in the next five years, and we will be with the National Library. So we're really, an not, not quite an archival center, but uh, any, but you'll take archival materials. At well, some point. that gets ahead of the story. OK. Can I, uh, yeah. The idea is that this is an academic research institute. We have two uh, main purposes. One is to conduct academic research in the field of Jewish genealogy. And the second is to, this is where the fun, big fundraising comes in, uh, create chairs of Jewish genealogy in major Jewish studies programs at universities all over the world. So you're really encouraging genealogy as a field of study as opposed to the hobby type right. thing that we are now. Right. What, what, the idea arose from the thought that over these 25 plus years that we've all been doing this, we've created the field. I mean, when, yeah. we, when, when Dan Rottenberg wrote his book in, in 1970-something, yeah. 80, oh, 77 it came out, there weren't any Jewish genealogy societies. We didn't even know you could do it. That's a few right. people did it, but most people thought it was impossible. And over this time, we've, we've developed a huge field with lots of resources and lots and of... And many people all over the world that are interested in and it. And at, at a very high level, yeah. you know, lots of reference books and so on. And our thinking is that genealogy has matured to a point where it's time to sort of take it to the next level. And that's what's the idea behind the Institute. And uh, in, 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 it's hard, in, in some ways, we can, we can describe it in very many different ways. The director is Neville Lambden, who used to belong to our genealogy society here in Washington. Oh, did he? I, I, he was the ambassador here. Or no, he was, was in the Foreign Service when Foreign he was Service. here. His yeah. last post, he retired a couple years ago, was as Israel's ambassador yes. to the Vatican. I thought that was very interesting. Yes, <laughs> yes. I, I, I read that in his ar right. recent article. Um, he's a historian by profession, and his PhD in Oxford was in Middle Eastern Studies. And, but um, he... Uh, Obviously, you can tell from his writing, he, he's, he's a native English speaker. He's from Glasgow, Scotland, originally, though he's lived in Israel since, oh, for almost 40 years. And we, he and I, and Gary Mokotov, and a handful of others began cooking this idea, oh, I guess in 1999, and then Neville went off to be Vatican. ambassador, and he came back, and we still talked about it. And talk to people, as you noticed in the um, in the article. Yeah. Article. Our founders committee are, pe are prominent genealogists and other and yeah. academics from all over the world. Yeah, we'll, we'll show a picture of him. Sure, with with Hanan Rappaport, and Hanan is the director of the Paul Jacoby Center, which was very important to us because the Paul Jacoby Center is a genealogy in, um, center at the library that had no money. But it was already there. And it was a genealogy center that's worldwide, known worldwide, and he collected m much material. It sort of gives you a, a start to have something to, to right. begin your basis with. But it also had, you, you, you learn so many things as you start from nothing. You have to get your toehold in here. And even though genealogy has grown and grown and grown, not everybody thinks it's a wonderful thing. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, but, um, what can I tell you? What more? Well, OK, so you talked when we were talking before about um, the mission statement is you've just said is right. to, to get that word out and how is that going to affect the individual okay it's, you're really not dealing with an individual so much as you are organizations well it's it um 
as I mentioned to you, that one of the uh, people involved with us is a professor from the prestigious Weizmann Institute in, in Israel. He's actually a professor of nanoscience. Don't ask me what it is. But he's an avid genealogist, and he's written a paper called Genealogy as a, uh, as a Science. And he says that just as you can think of economics as microeconomics and macroeconomics, so too can you think of genealogy as microgenealogy and macro. Let's, let's explain that, even though you make a uh, comparison. Okay. Micro would be doing my own genealogy. Right. And macro is more inclu uh, inclusive of, of a the larger, Jewish community. Right, or things interdisciplinary. Let me give you an example. Um, you've, certainly, we've all heard about the DNA studies. Yeah. Okay. Well, there are some prof there's a professor at Haifa University, one in New York City. No, you just said you've all heard about the DNA study. Let's explain it since we're on TV and not everybody oh, okay. about it. Very briefly, uh, you can now do testing for family relatives if you think you're related. Uh, it has to be the same sex. Um, but if you think somebody's your grandparent and you think it's a second or third cousin or fourth cousin, you can get your DNA tested and right. find, find out, out your most recent common generation. ancestor. It's a whole new field. And um, these, there's people, you, you maybe heard about the, the professor who discovered the Kohanim, the so-called yes, Kohanim gene. Yes, we did done that. Show okay. Too. So, so he's, he and his colleagues are interested in what they call migratory. Um, migratory patterns of the Jews. Of yes, the but they call it something, migratory anthropology or some such stuff. And they're interested in collecting and in, in creating a database. They've been working with Ashkenazic Jews, Jews from Europe. But they find that the Jews who are most similar to the Jews of the biblical times are the Sephardic Jews. And so they're interested in getting a, a database of Jews whose families lived in the Iberian Peninsula before the Spanish Inquisition, the Edicts of mm -hmm. Expulsion, and went to the Ottoman Empire. That's, nobody to, they don't want those who went to North Africa because there was intermarriage with local tribes there. So they want the Ottoman Empire. and. We, we got in touch with them and said, well, is there any value to you in having individuals who are on the same family tree when the family tree goes back to Spain? And they said, oh, is yeah. there ever? And I don't understand the math, but somehow, yeah. mathematically, that really makes things much better. So we've been co um, cooperating with them in supplying people of, who are willing to be tested, whose genealogies we know go back the 500 years, and who are Sephardic and meet the criteria. And we've raised the money for the testing. So that's an example of interdisciplinary work. But you also asked me earlier how this will help you, yeah. or will it? And I guess my thought is, as a byproduct in, in many ways, because one of the, the things this year, we're, we're only working on a limited basis. I only raised yeah. half of our budget. <laughs> but one of the first things we need to do is to develop the tools for the research. Just, you know, the yeah. carpenter has to buy his tools to do the job. And we feel that the tool that's most needed is, a, is what I call an annotated catalog of all, and the word under, to underline is all known resources for Jewish genealogy everywhere in the world. Now, we know a lot, and Jewish Gen has listed a whole bunch of stuff, but to my knowledge, nobody has synthesized and organized all of it, so that if you come to me and say, what is known about the shtetl of, pick a name, then we can go right to it and say, da 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 here, 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 including even letters to the editor of Avotenu five or ten years ago. Anything that where somebody questioned that. Or, or somebody talked about, or in a recent issue, uh, we had a letter to the editor saying, some Polish libraries are beginning to put online full text images of business directories, and the towns that have done it are. Okay, and if that will get time. indexed. So this will be the initial job will be huge because there's 25 some years to, to, to do and to organize, and then it will be maintained on a constant, constant basis. All even though the institute is formally at the library in Jerusalem, the director has to sit somewhere. Its outreach is going to be worldwide, and all its activities will be on the internet, free of charge. So this this database would then, be. Oh my God! That, that solves all your genealogy well, problems. Almost, yeah. But it does solve a lot. 
because even if you could tell, you know, I'm interested in Costello and tells me the name of the mayor or, or at least the office address of where to write to for, for something like oh, that. Or it tells you what is known about resources for Jewish genealogy in Castell. That, that kind uh, of uh, thing. That's incredible. Because it, it, it half the time you spend now, you know, if, if this town is there, where, where in the world am I going to write to? Who am I going to write to? You know, even if you think you want to write to the mayor of the town, you still don't know how, how to address it or anything. Right. So that is that's yes, so, fantastic. So that, that is a huge job. Our biggest um, plan for this year is, is a symposium that we're going to hold in September, a two and a half day symposium entitled Jewish Genealogy, colon, Research and Teaching Priorities. And we have experts from all over the world, experts in specific fields, coming to present papers, and we've asked them to give us, in, in order, your first three priorities of what you would like to see done in the field of genealogy. Wow. Yeah. So Where are you going to hold it? In Jerusalem. In Jerusalem. Um, we have Carl, Dr. Skoretsky from the DNA Studies. We have uh, Alexander Bader for onomastics. We have Steve Morse for computers. Mm -hmm. We have Professor Wagner on genealogy and hard science. I think it's math. That's what makes it hard. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have Susan King is coming on outreach to the Jewish genealogy community. Jeff Malka, who's been on our show, will talk about Sephardic research. Um, it, this is being done in cooperation with the uh, Genealogy Center at Cape Town, South Africa. So they're sending a representative also. So you also I, I think I read in, in that article you're also going to try to work with those that are finding their way back to Judaism. For no, that was another article oh, in this. Okay. <laughs> but, but I will tell you that when we um, an open, so-called opened our doors, there was a full-page story on us in Haaretz, which is the leading Israeli newspaper, on a Friday, which is their weekend edition. And we've been showered with responses. I just came back from Israel. I was in Israel last week. And I just, everywhere I went, it seemed that somebody had read that article. People who were not doing genealogy, but were excited about it. And we've been getting CVs from people who say, I'm retiring and I would love to be associated with you. Oh, I wonderful. dream of being associated. One woman, um, I have to find out where her G German genealogy is, has spent untold decades researching all the Jewish families of a couple of regions of Germany. She has this massive amount of information. Can she donate it to us? Oh, okay. yes. There, there you go. Yes, yes, she can. That's that's one. So of you the are going to be okay. You're going to be collecting things if it's more than one person. Preferably, if it's more than one I person. I think so. Um, the issue, you know, at this point, I can only say that the National Library is being phenomenal. Uh, they are so welcoming. It's just heartwarming. And they've told us, oh, yes, you can take books. Oh, yes, you can take papers. We're going to build a new building. We've set aside five rooms for a suite of offices for Wonderful. you. Wonderful. Isn't that amazing? Well, five rooms. It's I mean, yeah. Um, so it's, it, what, what I noticed is that it is penetrating to the larger society, the, the, the interest in and concept of, and also that second part about the professorships. Ultimately, down the road, if college students can, can major in as a sub-major of Jewish study, the whole how to do genealogy, oh, that's the other thing. Um, Brigham Young University in Utah, as far as I know, is the only, Ameri the only university anywhere that has a field of study called genealogy. Yeah. So the head of that program is also coming to Jerusalem to the symposium to tell us how you, you, you do that kind of stuff. But if people can study that, then it will fan out, I think, into the larger Jewish world, which is we're interested in sort of professionalizing and maybe structuralizing, if I could use such a word, genealogy. And it, it's now a wonderful hobby for, most, for those of us who do it. But we're thinking that it properly become something more as it evolves. And one thing you, that you've got to do is to get it down lower. I just experienced trying to teach 7th and 8th graders, and I wasn't happy with it. I think the kids were okay with it, but I need more guidance. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I know what to do, but I, that's not what I can tell a, a 12 or 13-year-old to do. I suspect that the teachers of 12 and 13-year-olds will know how to do it. If, if we give them this, the information. I don't know, because you have to, how, I mean, you can't talk to a 12 or 13 year old, tell them to go down to the Library of Congress. No. They can't do no, that. No, that's they, what they, I'm they, saying. They're, they're pretty much stuck doing stuff right. on the internet. Oh, 
and, and all the stuff on the internet becomes new thing. Yeah, I mean, I mean, but eventually you're going to have to go beyond that. Probably. And uh, well, maybe not in, in another fifty years. You may not have. To. Well, it might be that one of the projects would end up being a, a joint project with the education with the Ministry of Education in Israel, where teaching genealogy is mandated in the seventh grade. But each teacher is left to her own devices currently. There's no standard mm. curriculum. We got a letter from the archivist of Israel, the head of the Israeli State Archives, saying, I want to do a joint project with you on Bulgarian names. I don't know why Bulgarian. Yeah, well, that's probably where they came from. Well, yes, it is where he came from. <laughs> <isn't> <laughs> <it>? <laughs> that's why. <laughs> but you see, there's a lot of, oh, a, a, a professor of hematology at um, Hadassah Hospital is studying a rare disease among Yemenite Jews. And she's interested in genealogies of Yemenite Jews, just to pat, follow, like, like Stanley Diamond's okay. studies of beta So everybody, there are a lot of fields in which really reliable genealogies which would be very helpful. <clears throat> I think uh, some of the breast cancer research yes, is, of course. Is, is that because they say uh, women from Eastern Europe, if their parent, mothers had it, are very highly likely to get it, and so on. So I, I think there's a lot of, of uh, medical. Oh, tell, things that we did can you find. happen to see in the newspaper some months ago about the Harvard study in Iceland? Harvard Medical School is, has started a very large study in Iceland because it's a small population, I, a closed population, and they have all their genealogies. And they're and, very opposed to it. Who's opposed to it? The population. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes, we were, you know, we were in Iceland uh, about three Whatever, five years, maybe it's five years ago already, four years ago, and it mentioned something like that, and they said they didn't want... Well, this is more recent, so they found they somebody... Well, who I mean, they, they, they might find somebody. Right, because they said our, our particular guide was... Because they were talking about them. studying diabetes. And, of course, until the latter part of the 20th century, Jew, the Jewish world was very uh, contained. Yeah, too. And, and so there are uh, a, some uh, these recessive genes and medical yeah. studies that, indeed... In fact, one of the most fascinating suggestions comes from a local, from one of the members of our society, Anita Pikus, who is recently retired as chief audiologist at NIH. Well, it seems that there is a rare hearing disorder among Jew Sephardic Jews from the Iberian Peninsula, and the same disorder, very rare, shows up among some people in Ecuador, and is only known to exist among these Sephardic Jews from the Spanish Peninsula well, and yeah. these people in Ecuador. Well, you know that, 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 that through history that the early Spaniards, when they sent their sons out, sent them to... to well, to what, our, what our we workers. do know is that the conversos, the secret Jews who were fleeing yeah. Portugal, uh, came to the New World in great numbers. In fact, there were um, at that time, Ecuador was part of Peru. And there were so many secret Jews in Peru that the Inquisition established, that they established yeah. a branch of the Inquisition in Peru. Yeah. So... The Mormons have microfilmed the birth and death and marriage records of these people that we're talking about. So we have a possibility of a study of a very, you know, sort of esoteric sort to see if indeed these people in Ecuador might be descendants of the secret Jews from the Iberian Peninsula. Uh, they, do they have any history of it? Like, I don't know. Because in Brazil, you know, there's, there's groups of people that, oh, that, yeah. that do these strange things. They, you right. Know, Oh, yes, yeah, of they, course. They, they, like they have a funny box on their door, and they don't know why. The cross is hanging at a different angle, and, right, and, and exactly. they salt their food and, yes. and various things. Uh, so, so those yeah. whole migratory things are, are very important. Um, well, I think that whole DNA thing is just absolutely fascinating in the way they can follow people. Oh, through and, and oh it, changes, it changes everything. So oh. that, that's, all, that's your, your macro interdisciplinary thing to get back to right. what we were talking about. Right. Um, I myself, oh, there is another thing that um, I'm going to be working on, which is standards. You know, the, the professor at Hadassah Hospital said we would die for reliable genealogies. Mm. Well, what's a reliable genealogy, Arlene? Some of, I confess, I confess several times, when I started way back when, I thought I'd never forget anything, right? Yeah, of course. I didn't write down <laughs> my sources and document, document, document. But it, it is much easier to document now than it used to be, too. You don't have to worry about those papers, and, and we want to talk about that anyway. So you can digitize um, oh, yeah. um, your things and put it right in your genealogy program. Right. So what we have in mind is to get a little group together to talk about generating a handbook 
for um, documentation, for research yeah. and documentation. And then, though, yes, you asked about collections. We will collect family trees, I should add. We do expect in, to collect family trees. What I'm thinking is we're going to have two categories. Some of the family trees will get the special stamp, you know, what we call it, stamp what we call it in, 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 among Jewish, the heksher, <laughs> <laughs> the kosher stamp, saying this, these meet the standards that can mm -hmm. be used for medical research and things yeah. like that. But yes, we, we hope to collect whatever genealogy, so you can send yours there That's too. Yeah. Well, I guess the rabbinic... Um, any, anything with rabbinic lines you, you're but, particularly interested in because but, everybody, if you go far back enough, you've got to have some con connection. Yeah, that's, that's the point. It, the, the idea would be ultimately to have a center that is the worldwide repository. Of, there is no such thing. There is, yeah. Right now, until we open, there was no academic center devoted to Jewish genealogy. With all this activity mm -hmm. and so on, it has remained in the province of the, of the hobbyists. And uh, we just think it's so important that it should, yeah. it should go one step further. And in fact, I think the whole field is, is professionalizing some. Look at the, uh, three years ago, Jewish Gen became an affiliate of the Museum of Jewish Heritage. Um, so it, it, the yeah. movement is in that direction. Yeah, you've got to... Uh Actually, Jewish didn't could stand on its own if they could could have managed it. But well, no, they, they needed they, the financing. Yeah, that's, that's just it, because... The whole idea of it was that it was free, and that was so incredible. Well, but you know, things, things become expensive, yeah. and now there are five or six people at the top of Jewish Gen who earn their livelihood running, running Jewish, Jewish Gen. Gen. And there is some talk that they may have to go the route of Ancestry.com. And start charging. For, for some things. In fact, they, still, they already have one category where if you give, donate $100 a year, you get certain privileges that you don't have otherwise. Oh. What privileges are there? I don't remember. <laughs> but I don't remember. But that gets us okay, off, let's, the, let's, off the topic. Uh, your, your institute does have a web page? Yes, it's, it's www.iijg.org. And email, you, if you have something you want to tell us, you can write to director at iijg.org. And it's again, II is International well, Institute for, for Jewish, Jewish Genealogy. Genealogy. So it's fairly easy to remember if you remember the right. name. Right, yes, if you, if you can... Uh, think of it. And um, we're, of course, the big thing is that we have to get the funding. And that's the hardest. So if there's anybody out there who wants to donate anybody, some funds, anybody anybody out, we, have, we have what we call a naming opportunity <laughs> for the right person with the right amount of money who wants this whole center to be named after his parents. <laughs> I'd be more than happy to talk to them. <laughs> Everybody dreams of getting yeah. an endowment. Yeah. And then you can do all the projects you want to do. And um, I have a list. There's one last project I'd yep. like to talk about because it's, it's my baby. Uh, Yad Vashem, as you know, is the largest Jewish database in the world. Well, mostly right now it's composed of pages of testimony, two-thirds of it. I think of those pages of testimony as like flat little dots, individuals. But before they were murdered, they were what I call a web of kinship. They were related to other people. It, that's what we yeah. do in genealogy and they lived in a certain place. I would like, and, and we've done some studies to see if it's feasible, and it is, I would like to make a genealogy for every person whose page of testimony is at Yad Vashem, and then cluster it by community, and in effect, recreate the town, the town before the Holocaust. If you have that database, you can do fabulous migratory studies and fabulous DNA studies, and you okay. also will will more, ac and historical, you will more accurately represent the, ex the, the situation as it was. It will be more meaningful than just the individual. And of course, the, the, the pages of testimony, maybe we should say something about those. Uh, a page was uh, written by a family member or neighbor or friend uh, about somebody who right. died. And so generally gives parents' names. And it does, things like that's that. what and, makes it. And, and you have to say, you know, like, I was a nephew, niece. But that's what makes friend. it possible. And now we have all this new computer data which allows for the merging of family trees so that I might end up with, for a given shtetl, a family forest. <laughs> <laughs> that would be wonderful. Right. I don't and, 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 uh, and I should say something, uh, that uh, because those pages are now uh, uh, available, right. people are finding living relatives that they had submitted the pa pages oh, for. Oh, right. I, uh, 
Okay. Do we, if we have a minute, I want to tell you a story. We have two minutes, yeah. Okay. I received a, a, an email message. Hello, my name is Galena. I live in Australia. In 1941, when my father was six years old, he was living in St. Petersburg, Russia. His mother was arrested by the Russian police, and he never saw her again. He would like to know what, the fa what his mother's fate was. We have been trying all these years to learn. My, his mother's name was such and such. Her father's name was, his grandfather's name was such and such. That's all the information. I went to the Yad Vashem database. Couldn't find the name. It's an odd name. And then when I couldn't find it, I did the next thing I always do with these kind of questions. I sent him to Randy Deitch, our Avotano Ask the Expert. That was in the morning. About five hours later, he called me from Jerusalem, where he lives now, and he said, well, I know what happened to her mother, and I have found a first cousin of her father living here in Israel. Oh, my God. It's, it's in the crowd. And I said, what did you do? <laughs> and he said, I went to the Yad Vashem database. I said, I did too. He said, well, I couldn't find it, but then I realized that they haven't organized their names according to the Deitch Mokotov sound decks, even though they have various other ways. So then I went to the Ellis Island database, and I found variant spellings of that same name. I took the variant spellings and went back to the Yad Vashem database and found this cousin who had submitted. Oh, my God. Isn't that amazing? I mean, there's so now the man in Australia has, has made plans to come visit his cousin in in, in Israel. The, this last Avotenu issue of Avotenu that uh, that you put, published, I think, was had some of the most heart wrenching stories in there of finding family. Oh, uh, that was uh, that, that man that who was living in the same city with his sister in Lithuania after the one they didn't know it, and 63 years later was reunited. Yeah. And, and of course, Evelyn, who was, had come here and spoken at our 25th, uh, right. uh, who was a hidden child who then found her family. It's just, just incredible. So much more is happening now than it has ever, ever happened yeah, in, in, in the last 20 years it, put together. It's, yeah, increasing at an increasing rate is what's going on. Well, that's all, that's all we have time for today. Thanks. <laughs> sure. <laughs>